Hi, welcome to MIG Monday. I'm Paul. We have an ongoing series uh, about welding parameters and what happens. We've done a couple of episodes of what happens when you change wire feed speed, what happens when you change voltage. Today we want to deal with uh, inductance. Now, some of these small wire welding machines that we have at home for our hobbies and stuff uh, have a fixed inductance and you have no ability to control uh, the percentage of inductance. On machines like that, they have a fixed setting of what they feel is an optimum uh, inductance for uh, whatever parameter you choose. Uh, some, some machines, maybe a little more upscale a little bit, or, or with modern technology, uh, also give you the ability, the ability to adjust inductance from a low value to a high value. Now, before we start adjusting inductance, let's talk a little bit about what inductance is. Um, <clears throat> We know in the short arc motion, in the short arc welding mode, the wire actually comes down and contacts the molten pool, and hence it creates a short circuit, hence the name short arc welding. And the spatter results because once we have a dead short, the electrode starts to heat up because the current is still flowing, and finally it gets so hot uh, from the current flowing through there that it explodes into, uh, and, and separates that short circuit and reignites the arc. And that happens over and over and over again. Inductance control, kind of what it, in a nutshell what it does, it controls how rapidly that wire heats up after there's been a short circuit. So if you have high inductance, what's going to happen is it's going to allow current to th flow very quickly to, to uh, offset that short circuit. So I guess to simplify things, if you have a short circuit, you have no arc, the arc is out, okay? And when you don't have a short circuit, the arc is on. So with high inductance, because it's clearing that short rapidly, you have a higher arc on time, which generally translates into a hotter weld pool uh, and, and actually in a little less spatter as well. Now, when you have a lower inductance, it takes the wire a longer period of time to heat up, and then when it does, it's gonna explode with a vengeance and send a lot of spatter around, and so you have more arc off time uh, than you do with high inductance. So, you know, the puddle is either hotter or colder, and th that can be a pretty, a pretty nice control to have because you can really dial into the type of arc and the type of sound or whatever it is that you like uh, for the material and the parameters you're welding with. So having an inductance control can be a, a, pretty, a pretty nice little feature. So what we're going to do to kind of try to illustrate what inductance does in, in a weld, uh, I'm gonna make a, three welds. We're gonna use the machine setting, you know, that it comes with, you know, it's kind of like the default setting on this particular machine. Uh, and it's about, it's gonna be about the same regardless of the machine or brand that you're using, that optimized area that they feel is, it's gonna be pretty similar throughout the spread of machines. Uh, so I'm gonna make a weld like that and we can kind of look and see what happens with the arc. Uh, and then I'm gonna change the inductance to a high value and make another weld. And then I'm gonna change inductance to a low value and make another weld so that we can kind of see uh, what the differences are. And because I'm gonna be making all three welds on a, on a single plate, what I'm gonna do is, like I've done in earlier demonstrations, after each weld, I'm gonna quench it so that the plate temperature is the same when I'm making the weld, because as we all know, once the plate starts getting hotter and hotter and hotter, you know, the, the weld bead is gonna change and how it washes in and penetration, all those things are gonna change. So we want apples to apples, so I'm gonna quench it between each weld. Then, when we're done with that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut and etch the all three pieces and compare them just to see if there's even a, any kind of difference in the penetration profile, uh, which uh, that'll be an interesting uh, thing to kind of discover too, because one, you're gonna have a hotter puddle versus a colder puddle, but is it gonna be hot enough or cold enough that it's gonna make a difference in penetration? So that's, that's what we'll find out when, uh, when we cut and etch. So with that, let's uh, get the machine set up and start some welds and we'll see where it takes us. Okay, we're ready to make a weld. Uh, the machine is, the, the default setting for this particular machine is 35% inductance. So that's what we're doing our first weld with, and then we'll, we'll change to a high and low on the next, uh, next couple of welds. Uh, the 35%, without knowing 100% certainty, but I'm gonna guess that all the, all the machines with a fixed inductance are gonna be somewhere right in that range because that's kind of an optimum uh, issue that most companies are gonna uh, set up for their, for their uh, welding parameters. So 
35% on this one, and uh, this is the what we'd call the standard setting. All right, here we go. Okay, now I'm gonna change the inductance from the kind of automated or default 35%. We're gonna change it down to zero inductance and make a weld and see what that like. Uh, on this particular machine, uh, all I gotta do is dial up here to the advanced features, press it over there, and then the, the first little thing right there, that's inductance. You can see 35%, that's, that's their default setting more or less. And all I gotta do is change that. What we do is just press the button and then I can dial whatever I want, either up or down. And in this case, we're gonna go down all the way down to zero. And that's, we now have set the machine for zero inductance. We'll make another weld and see how that turns out, okay? Okay, that was our second weld with zero inductance. Now I'm gonna again go to the advanced features on this machine and set it for 100% inductance and we'll see what a difference that makes. Possibly on your last weld you saw a lot more spatter than on the first weld. And consequently this time around you should see less. Okay, we've got it set to 100% and we'll make this next weld and See what happens. Okay, there's our three welds. I've labeled them. This was the optimized machine setting at 35. Uh, then, of course, that was the zero uh, inductance and 100% inductance. And if you look at the bead shape, while it isn't necessarily gigantically dramatic, uh, this one is, this is the optimized one. It's relatively flat, nice profile there. The zero, you know, that's it's a little more humped up. Again, nothing that you have to be overly alarmed about or anything. And then 100% uh, inductance, probably is the flattest bead profile here. And you can see the, you know, the, the uh, motion marks or the, from my, my technique of the way I weld uh, a little more clearly here. So uh, appearance wise, not real dramatic, but you, in the video you probably noticed a dramatic more amount of spatter with, these, uh, with the 0% inductance and much less with the 100. And then of course the, the optimized one was kind of an in-betweener. So uh, a little bit different bead profile, some significant difference in spatter. And now what we're gonna do is get these cut and etched and then we're gonna take a look and see if there's any difference in penetration profile. And as soon as we get that done, we'll, uh, we'll come in and we'll show you what our results were with that. All right, here's our etched and cut and etched samples. Uh, you can see the penetration profiles. One of the things I want to point out is that there is not really a significant difference in the penetration profile of any of these. Uh, and that's mostly because we use the same wire feed speed and the same voltage for each weld. And as we've discussed in the past, uh, wire feed speed is generally your penetration. That's your, that's your heat, your amperage. Uh, and that was the same for all of these, the same with the voltage. Uh, so that really, realistically, the voltage kind of helps spread the puddle out. And you know, we had the same voltage all the way. So the only variable here, besides my human failings, is you know, I was trying to do the same thing with each, each weld. Uh, and I think for the most part, I succeeded. Uh, but the, the primary difference here was the inductance setting. This first one here, uh, and if you look at the bead profiles, you can kind of see what happened. This was the optimized induction that the uh, 
most machines come set with. Uh, like I said earlier, this machine allowed me to change inductance. So over here, I went to a zero inductance, which had resulted in a colder puddle. And you can even see the, the bead profile is a little more humped up. And then over here, with 100% inductance, uh, it's, a, it's a flatter bead profile. There was also a lot less spatter uh, with this particular uh, setting as well. So if you have a machine that you can, where you can adjust your inductance, that just gives you one more little piece of control that you can kind of deal with spatter or fluidity of the puddle uh, to optimize your welding procedures. So uh, hopefully you got an idea now what inductance does. And if you're, I don't want to say lucky enough to have an inductance control on your machine, but it does just give you a, a little bit more control. So anyway, that's inductance. Hopefully you learned a little something. And we'll see you next time on MIG Monday. Well, if you learned something today or like what you saw, please feel free to subscribe and keep an eye out for new episodes every MIG Monday. Just leave it. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> well, it's quenched. <laughs>